Corinthians chapter 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. I want you to just turn over there. I want to read this to you. Verses uh, 3 and 4. For although we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. 1 Timothy 1, 18 and the A part of 19 said, This charge I commit unto thee, son Timothy, according to the prophecies which went on, went before on thee, that thou mightest war a good warfare, hold in faith and a good conscience. Revelation chapter 12, we read, The accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto death. Zechariah chapter 4 and verse 6, the first part says, It's not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. You know, victory that has been won but must be enforced in the life of every believer, that victory over the devil and his forces should be the desire of every Christian wherever, whatever we are, is to overcome in the areas where Christ has already brought that victory about. The greatest speech makers, the richest people, the highest politician, the largest industries, biggest political machine, mightiest army in the sum in total, powerful forces known to mankind, put all together as bowed, as efficient as toothpicks against saints or, or tanks, as it is for people or anything besides God to war against the enemy. Nothing is effective except the weapons that have been given us as the people of God. Carnal weapons are useless against the enemy and the foe that we find ourselves against. You may try, and the church certainly has, psychology, emotions. We've watched all the calisthenics of religion. I know that when a man, when a woman, is touched of God. They act strangely sometimes. But just to get them to act strangely won't do a thing for anybody. We're talking about the Holy Spirit. We can try, uh, we can try psychology, emotions, knowledge programs, promotion, aggressive visitation, activities, super bus ministries, personalities, advertising, manipulation, stunts, contests, hair phone books and two, food, bribery, carnal acts, but God guarantees their failure. I said God guarantees their failure. Amen. Everything and anything is guaranteed against anything but divine fire. Unless we move and walk in the Holy Spirit, then we're going to be victimized by the very enemy that we claim to have the victory over. We must learn to do God's work in God's way. He's given us the much-needed weapons I read to you in 2 Corinthians. Possession of such weapons, though, is not enough. We have them if we're filled and birthed of the Holy Spirit. We have these weapons, but just the possession of them is not enough. Knowledge of how to use them will win no battles. Just the fact that you've got it in your head won't win a battle against the devil. We must use these weapons to pull down the strongholds of the devil. Amen. To know about them, to have them in our possession, we'll do nothing. It's only as the church enters in to the warfare set before, using the weapons of this warfare to pull down the strongholds of the devil. We're not to emphasize the weak points of the opposition. We're to attack him where he's the strongest. It is here that God is saying, we're not trying to go around or outflank him. He must be not only defeated, but destroyed. So many times the church in her effort is trying to sneak past the devil, outflank him. Oh no, we're not to slip up behind him. We're to face him head on in the power of the living God. I give you power over all the power of the devil must be the marching army. We must not emphasize the weak points. After victory, 
We're not only just to defeat him, we're to dismantle his place of power and leave him no place for the future. Wherever we claim, we claim for keeps. I was born again 40 years ago on the 21st day of this month. God, I became the property of God. I, I, it is not the will of God that the devil should ever use this vessel again. You hear me? I said it's not the will of God. When we claim a territory for God, it is the purpose of God that we stand on that place. Dismantle the forces of hell. Destroy everything that looks for him. Put out everything that suggests him. We are more than conquerors. We're not going to produce the millennium, folks. No, sir, Jesus is going to do that. I can tell you in our lives, our family, our church, the devil's to be under our feet. We're to walk on him. We are more than conquerors in the name of Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What are strongholds that we're to pull down? Places, situations, and people where, humanly speaking, it would be appear impossible for God to work. Strong habits, great problems, rebellious cold hearts, dead churches, devil-controlled territory, or any error that makes weak back, lazy believers give up and say it can't be done. It is the purpose of God that we pull down these strongholds. The very people that you say can't be saved are the people that are going to make the greatest in the kingdom of God. We're not as wise as God. We must recognize there's nothing impossible with God. And it's those places that look impossible that God is saying to us, pull them down. I said, pull them down. I've found people who talk religion at the drop of a hat, but they'll never give themselves to God. It is these strongholds. Take courage. God says all things are possible to him that believeth. We need to win a victory. Pull down a stronghold. Let, let the devil know that we mean business with God. Now our various, our, our weapons are various, but they're all related. All of them. You take in human warfare, different weapons are used for different needs. I was in, in one war, World War Number 2. We, we used bazookas for tanks. We used rifles, hand grenades for people. Now we got missiles for airplanes, submarines for battleships. In other words, we didn't pull a submarine up on shore to try to get a sniper out of a tree. Amen. We used the weapons in, in, in accord with the need. God has given us various weapons. They are all related. Jesus, our commander, can give direction through the Holy Spirit according to his sovereign desire. Some situation uh, will be obvious, scripture. Others he'll direct. But the weapons that we use are, the, are going to determine the victory. We're up against things. We're up against places. We're up against peoples. We're up against strongholds. But there's nothing in front of me that I cannot handle if I belong to God. Nothing. There's no problem. This church and its people cannot overcome if we recognize what God has given us. I want to deal with these weapons for a little while this morning. I want God to arrest your mind. I can tell you as we move toward the end of this age, we're, we're seeing this new age theology come into the church and the Christ has, and his doctrine is becoming the doctrine of the Christian church. The kingdom now theology uh, and the domin kingdom now dominion says uh, to, in no uncertain terms that we are the ongoing incarnation of Christ. Not talking about being a partaker of his divine nature, but going into that eastern cult of reincarnation. Now, when you consider that the unity movement that guys in itself under charismatic and Pentecost today has its roots in that kind of a situation. Evolution being the very key stone to it all. Moving beyond the, the evolution that we're talking about in the schools, and that'll be changed pretty rapidly. Uh, it'll be more of a conscious revolution that's taking place in evolution. 
But what I want to say to you, we're up against things. That reincarnation uh, of the Hindu is the reason there are no victims. They say that the karma that you sell, when it dies, it comes back, maybe in a toad frog or something else. We've updated that in America. Well, Shirley MacLaine has made it just human. We come back always in human form. But you see what they say in that. And I, I'm dealing with the devil and, and the weapons to be used against him. They, they say that whatever you come back, a uh, Hitler may come back as a frog to pay for his past sin, to overcome his karma. That's the reason in India when you see one of a caste system born and bred and dying on the street with nothing to eat, they have no care for him. They don't attempt to feed him. They say there's no victims. In America, you have that witch that has the Chandler that allows that 30 a uh, 5,000 year old spirit to talk to her, Ramtha they call it. She says murder is not wrong when you recognize the situation of reincarnation. You're just going to come back in a better form. It'll be higher. What am I saying? I'm saying that that kingdom now theology has embraced that, not in that extreme, but hear me at will because they're saying that the enemy to radical is a fundamental Bible-believing Christian that has to be done away. All I'm telling you, church, we're going to deal with the devil or he's going to deal with us. We're going to face up to what we're against in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ using the weapons given us or else we're going to face him with every weapon he has. Looking at these weapons, prayer is the first one I want to mention for nothing else is worthwhile without that. I don't care how high you kick your heels, it doesn't matter whatever else you do, if yours is not prayer, if there's not prayer room in that life, then you're victimized. The Bible said you'll pray or you'll faint. This weapon has a multitude of uses, prayer. It, it is so simple that a, ya, a child may use it, yet so deep that the greatest saint has never mastered it. Amen. A child can pray. But the greatest saint ever lived on this earth has never mastered this one weapon of prayer. It's, it is the most difficult to sell to a sleeping church because nothing else, no gifts, no nothing operate until that, that weapon is in place in the church. I just want to bring to you some of the following use of this. I can't tarry long, but, but you, you can just... Hang on to what I've got to say. Fasting, Matthew and Mark, all the way through. You see in Matthew 9, Matthew 17, Mark 9, 29, we see this tool of fasting with prayer. Amen. What is a lost art in the church of our time. No wonder the flesh has become such a prevalent thing in the church because the one weapon God has given to deal with that flesh is, is fasting. He said in Mark 9, 29, this kind come forth by nothing but by prayer and by fasting. When I pray, I lift up that man of God. When I fast, I put down that sinful nature. It is here, listen, that's the weapon. If I walk in the Spirit, then the devil recognizes things. If I walk in the flesh, I'm victimized. Fasting. Number two, asking. James 4 and 2 says, You have not because you ask not. Supplication and fellowship. Ephesians 6 and 18 talks about the supplication of prayer. Number four, claiming the lost souls. Psalms 2 and 8 says, Ask of me and I'll give you the heathen. We, we may pass in a card for a loved one, but there has to come a burden. Listen, folks, I can tell you here now, that the problem is on our side, not God's. He's made every provision. When Zion travails, sons and daughters, that's your sons, that's your daughters, will be born if you'll spend time with God. Scriptural arguments, Job 23, 3 and 4. Come out of it when he prayed for his friend. Binding and loosing. Amen. I'm talking about this weapon of prayer in Matthew 18, 18, and 19. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. 
Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. This is the awesome business of prayer, folks. My God, if I could stir your heart this morning. Amen. If I could move your mind to the reality that I don't care whatever else. You can go around prophesying. But it's like dry peas hitting a buckeye if you haven't spent some time before God Almighty that what you're doing is anointed. We've got so much pouring off the top of the head. We have all kinds of substitutes for Jesus out there in this hour. What we need is return to that altar, humble ourselves before God, wait upon Him till the anointing comes. Then we are affected. Prayer in number eight. Jesus name what a weapon to be used in prayer amen the name of Jesus you know the blood the cross and the name of Jesus are specific weapons the blood is a territory as I stand on that territory secured by the blood I can tell you there's no way the devil can touch that amen if you walk in the light as he is in the light Stand on that ground secured by the blood with the cross crucified. That old man, you can hurl the name of Jesus out across the waves. All hell has to bow its knee. Believe in faith. Mark 11, Romans 10, Hebrews 11. Amen. Whatsoever you ask in my name, believe in, it will be done. That is what we're talking Spirit intercession, Romans 8, 26, we yield ourselves to God. Then the Holy Spirit prays through us about things that we don't even know about. Oh, what, what opportunity as I begin in the, in, the, in the natural, progress to the spiritual so that the Holy Spirit can begin to pray through me. There'll be intercession made for things that I don't know anything about. There's strongholds that I don't recognize. There's problems against the church that I don't know where they are. But I'm here to tell you this morning, ladies and gentlemen, that the weapon of prayer is the thing that governs everything. It may not, the television may not like it. But I'm going to preach a while here this morning. Hey Amen. I, I, I've come to tell you something. I've come to tell you that everything's just right. There's, there's nothing come your way that you cannot conquer. There's nothing happening to you if you're walking with God that isn't in the will of God. Hallelujah. Everything's all right. Just walk on. God's doing something with your life. Persevering. Romans 18 and 1 through 8. Jesus gives a parable of a woman coming to an unjust judge. And he sent her away with, with, with very uh, mean to her. He had no compassion, but found her only knocking again. Amen. Knocking again. Finally, he said, I don't fear man. I don't fear the devil. But this woman is not going to stop until I do something. God is saying to us, this little confessional mess, lay me down to sleep prayer meeting. Our forefathers equated believing God with praying through. That is lay hold of God and hold on till there's an answer. We somehow lost that ability. We go pray for people, lay hands on them, say, now if you have to go to the hospital, call me. Amen. We didn't go there to believe anything in the first place. I can tell you every promise in this book, it's not negotiable. It can be won. It doesn't matter what it is. If we will persevere, this book teaches much about perseverance. Amen. You take such words as diligence and perseverance and holding on. We, you find what God is talking about. We come a-running up. We've got the inner healers and the gurus of religion calling everything a devil coming in. And we're trying and struggling to get somebody to do what only you can do. Press yourself on that altar. you got kids that are lost. You're sick. You have a need. Lay a hold of God. Let him know like Daniel that you know it's the will of God what you're after. I will not leave this altar until there's an answer to this prayer. I'm here on your hands. God said that's what faith is all about. Nevertheless, he said at the end of that parable, when the Son of Man comes back, will he find any faith in the earth? Will he find anybody with the ability just to hang on until there's an answer? Will he find it? Perseverance, abiding. John 15 and 7, if you abide in me, 
and my words abide in you, you can ask what you will, and it shall be done. When I was born again by one spirit, I was put into Christ, according to Corinthians uh, chapter uh, 12 and 13. By one spirit were we all baptized into Christ. I have nothing to do with that. That's a miracle of God. I said, that's a miracle of God. When I repented and believed the gospel, the Holy Ghost put me into Christ. But then it said to me, you abide there. I have everything to do with staying there. The choices I make along this road, call it legalism, call it whatever you want to. Hell term, that term, brother, in the sense that they're trying to make it. If I abide in Christ, then I am safe from the storm. I can overcome wind. I'm more than a conqueror as through faith and prayer. I abide in Christ. In Christ. Importunity. In Luke 11, 5 and 10, Matthew 50. Amen. Importunity. There come that man wanting bread at midnight. He said, I've got visitors come. I'm sorry. He said, I'm in bed. Those days, they, the, the bed was in the wall, and when it come down, it locked the door. He said, I've done locked the doors. My kids are in bed. I'd have to get them up. I'd have to put the bed back into the wall. Amen. It's too much trouble. Come back in the morning. But the man said, no, I need bread tonight. These folks have come a long ways. They're hungry. I need bread tonight, not tomorrow. And the Bible said, finally, not because of, of just the plea of the man, but because he knew that he wasn't going to get any sleep anyway. The man's not going to turn loose. He's going to get bread. My God, we go to the altar with a half-hearted, lay me down to sleep. We don't get it in five minutes. We say, I guess it wasn't the will of God. No wonder your life is half defeated. Amen. Consider that Jesus, the Son of God, pray. How much more do we need to pray? He still ministers. Said he ever lives to make intercession for you and I. Yes. He still prays. Yes. And you have the audacity to believe that you can make it without prayer. Ninety percent of the church believes that somehow. That they can make it without prayer. For whom he foreknew, he did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son. That he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Satan so fears the power of prayer that he'll do anything to keep you from having a life of prayer. I, I'm going to tell you something. You listen to him. He's so afraid of a prayer meeting. He's not afraid of anything else. No, no. I, I appreciate it. Oh, listen. I've always been an emotional man. Things excite me. Now, I get happy. Amen. I, I'm not saying the Holy Ghost takes my feet and jumps them around. I just jump them around like I clap my hands. Amen. But I, I can tell you this. I saw people kick their shoes halfway to that ceiling on a Sunday night. Didn't know they saved on a Monday. Amen. I can tell you the thing that secures that life is that life settled in God, in prayer. Amen. Holding on, laying a hold of God. The devil will do anything. He'll make you believe anything to keep you out of a life of prayer. Observe the thought battles you go through. The interruptions when you go to pray. Physical weakness that occur when you try to pray. I'm talking to people that have been there. Amen. You know when you get get before God. I can tell you, 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 I, I, I almost hide over there in the prayer meeting. Amen. Somewhere get under the platform. Because just as sure as you touch the Holy Ghost, there'll be somebody come touch you. Amen. The interruptions, the thought pattern, everything is designed to keep you from prayer. Bloody Queen Mary said, I fear the prayers of John Knox more than all the armies of Europe. That's right. The prayers of one man struck more terror to that devilish queen's heart than all the armies of Europe. Let me tell you, don't you ever forget the devil is not blind to the fact that somebody's on their knees. Hey. Amen. Oh, no. Oh, he knows that. He begins to quake when there's a sincerity about it. He don't worry about that now. Lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. But when there is that heart burdened and stirred that lays before the altar of God, hell is observant. I said hell is observant. 
hell knows. I said, it knows, mister. There is no other weapon like the weapon of prayer because everything else is games without it. That man prophesying that hadn't come from that prayer chamber is nothing. Amen. It's just words he says, but it is that heart is moved by prayer. Amen. But I got to move on. A good conscience. First Timothy 1, 18 and 19 talks about it. This good conscience is closely related to holiness. A holy life makes for a good, clear conscience. Of this, the Bible teaches some strong things. Consider First Peter 1, 15. Be ye holy, for I am holy. If the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? First Peter 4, 18. Holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. Hebrews 12 and 14. Christ Jesus, who of God has made unto us wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. First Corinthians 1 and 30. There obviously must be a penitent heart. Second Corinthians 7 and 11. With a carefulness towards sin. Oh, what a tragedy of our time. We are more of a peace movement anymore than we are of saving men from sin. We, we call sin mistake. Amen. Everybody makes a mistake. Let me tell you something. Adultery ain't no mistake. Fornication ain't no mistake. Stealing ain't no mistake. Drunkenness ain't no mistake. It's sin. And the Bible said God hates sin. God forgives. But the wages of sin is still death. There's consequences to sin, mister. The church is trying to make an easy place for folks to lay down on. And through the big name preachers of our time, we've almost made Calvary a license to sin. Have an affair with a woman oh, on a Friday night. Weep a little on a Saturday morning. Preach again on a Sunday. I'm telling you, moral, moral sin puts a man out of business as far as this pulpit is concerned. Put it any way you want to put it, mister. He that committeth adultery with a woman, a wound in his honor shall he receive, and his reproach will never be wiped away. Hide this book in your heart, you won't sin against God. There's three sins in this Bible outstanding. In this order, there is idolatry, adultery, and oppression. God says to you, you mess with idolatry, and you can so pollute the place that Christ can't even work in it. Moses will move the tabernacle outside of a temple grounds where idolatry took place. God said, get it up. It's so polluted. Adultery so sets a man in degradation. How, Joseph said, can such a man as I so sin against God? And to oppress the poor will close heaven to your ears. That's right. Amen. To your cry. Amen. Holiness. There must be a penitent heart. With a carefulness towards sin. Amen. Let me tell you something, folks. God hates sin. Amen. Don't you go call it no mistake. Right. Amen. If you were born again, believe you don't have to live that way. Right. I don't Amen. care what these bumper stickers say. Right. And I, I, I'm, I, Christians are not perfected. They're only forgiven. Well, I'll tell you one thing. I'm more than forgiven. I'm born again. Right. Any man be in Christ as a new creation. And the Bible said that which is born of God cannot sin. All the sin is because we keep tolerating this lower nature. Right. It's painful to kill it, and so we let it live. No, no, brother. You, we, we make so much emphasis today in our preaching about how we have to sin. I watched till I got sick to my stomach talking about if a man had a heart attack, if he'd been saved and he's in an act of adultery and died in that act of adultery, then he'd go to heaven. Then they went on and said, you have sin, yeah, you have sin, yeah. Well, I can tell you one thing. If I, if I sinned before I got to this church, I confess that sin and it's gone. We're so dealing with you have to sin that we make an excuse for our loose living. We made the flesh the devil so that we have an excuse. Well, he couldn't cast it out. Listen to me. We must... See sin as God sees it. We must be a clearing of ourselves before offended parties. There must be a zeal for what's right. Confession of sin brings a needed cleansing, according to 1 John 1 and 9. A good conscience will never fear skeletons being pulled out of the closet. Amen. I don't have to live in fear. Amen. We have an evangelist that come. Amen. He's going to come preach and 
All this stuff had broke out. He told Robert he'd like to stay in the home of somebody. He said, you know, uh, the motels where we stay is dangerous. It's only dangerous you want it to be, brother. I said, it's only dangerous. I believe I can walk along the very brink of hell. I'm not talking about tempting God. I'm talking about I can live where I have to live. I can be a Christian, mister. It isn't a glass house thing. It isn't a thing of environment. God has given me power to live. Good conscience. The Bible said, be sure your sins will find you out. I don't strike terror to the heart, amen, of a man that's walking with God. The believer can live an honest and open life, not fearing what the devil is going to bring up in the past. Amen. amen. I was 27 years old when I got saved. God wiped that out. Amen. I, I, I misused this body, and, and you pay for that. You lost an eye and a drunken brawl getting saved won't put it back. But I can tell you one thing. The sin won't be remembered against me anymore at the judgment. That's gone. And the Bible said, if I walk in the light as he is in the light, amen, then I am. I'm telling you, you read the book of Leviticus and all through there, the offerings of blood and the different offerings, you will find that all of those offerings, the peace offering, the sin offering, the burnt offering, amen, they track sin to its remotest haunt. They track sin to the unconscious state, amen, every one of those. If, if, if man may have sinned and didn't know it. There were sacrifices for that. I, I can tell you just like the seven redemptive names of God. Amen. We've got books wrote on them. People are trying to memorize Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nisi. You don't have to remember none of that. Just remember the name Jesus. Oh, hallelujah to God. Oh, my God. That's all you've got to remember. Because in Him is the fullness of the Godhead complete. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, hallelujah. All those dif different sacrifices trace sin to its remotest place. Amen. I, I don't have to go back and understand all those because there was one blood shed at one time. Thank God that takes care of sin, tracks it to its remotest haunt. The unconscious sin, the presumptuous sin, if I walk in the light. Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. Oh, Hallelujah. My God, I feel Jesus here. Oh, I feel Jesus here. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, Hallelujah. I want to deal with that. The next weapon the blood of Jesus. Revelation 12, 11. They overcame by the blood of the Lamb. Yes. Huh. Oh, yes. The blood. The precious blood. That is a theme of type and prophecy throughout the Old Testament. Nothing else. Everything was Christ. That law was a schoolmaster to lead me to Him. Every lamb that ever died, every goat ever turned loose, was saying, There's coming one. Oh, hallelujah. Thank God, if the blood of bulls and goats could have put away sin, there'd be no need for this lamb to come. But that wasn't possible. So one day, 2,000 years ago, on a hill called Calvary, God's lamb died. A blood was shed. Oh, my God, what a weapon, what a weapon. It is joy uh, and cleansing of believers now. It paid for sin. It opened up access to prayer. It purchased the church. It purchased our conscience and a multitude of other things. Oh, hallelujah to God. There he has been opened up to me. There was it all through the Old Testament. Only the high priest. That once a year, wake up out there. That once a year, listen, the high priest once a year could go in. But when he died, that veil was rent. And now the Bible said, I can come boldly to the throne of grace. There's a way been opened up, a new and a living way. To the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. My God. Oh, I'm talking about it. 
Oh, it purchased the church. Thank God it purchased my redemption. It made it possible for me to make it all the way. Amen. After redemption, one of the most important uses of the blood is often overlooked. It's a means of defeating Satan in battle. The Bible said the devil hates the blood. He fears its power. He's been overcome by it. The mention of it in word or song causes terrible shaking through hell. That's the reason most of the courses and the songs today have nothing to do with the blood. They're all about you being a king's kid. I'm telling you the thing you need to center on. Not so much you're a king's kid, but what made you a king's kid. Somebody died. Some blood was shed. Oh, hallelujah to God. Thank God for the blood of Jesus. What a weapon. Oh, yes. The mention of the blood in song or in message causes tremors to roll through that kingdom of darkness. Oh, yes. The actual spirit of use it against the devil makes us victors in Christ, makes Satan the defeated one. Stated in John 1 and 7 as a thought to benefit from. As we walk in the light, as he is in the light, then the blood. The blood yeah. cleanses. Oh, oh listen. If you walk with God, if you walk with God, this process of sanctification is going to continue to reveal in your heart things that God don't like. But it's just because you didn't know it. The Bible said growth process is that. God reveals. He knows what I don't know. And as I walk in that light, though, those things are there. But the blood, oh my God, keeps me in fellowship until God reveals to me. Then once he says, when I've revealed it, you must be away with it. I'm here to tell you, there's a lot of things in your life you don't know about. But as you walk in the light, as he's in the light, that blood keeps you fit for heaven. Oh, why don't you worship God? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> not only a good conscience, not only prayer, not only the blood, but our testimony connected with that blood overcame him, the devil, by the blood of the Lamb, the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto death. A good testimony for the believer is the, is the most prized possession. We should so live to protect it. Paul said to Timothy, guard the deposit, son. You don't have anything but a testimony. That's the reason God said, God said you must have as a minister a, a, a good report of the people outside. You have a lot of silly people in the church that will overlook anything. But I'm telling you, that crowd out there, they don't overlook it. They know what, what, when you're walking with God, they're not. Amen. A good conscience toward God. And you don't have anything Besides your testimony, you lose that, you lost everything. You lose that testimony. Well, the folks don't look at you. I'll tell you something, young people. The wages of sin is death. I can tell you, this is a promiscuous age. Sex has become uh, quite a, a conversation. No longer are we talking about absence. We're talking about telling you how to do it and keep them getting AIDS. I can tell you there's something worse than AIDS. And that's death. God Almighty. The AIDS brings death to the physical. But sin, the wages of sin is death. Engage yourself in the wrong kind of living. I can tell you one thing. It'll kill you. Amen. I said it'll kill you. The wages of sin is death. It isn't a matter of learning how to have safe sex. It's a matter of absence. Amen. God. They, they, have, they have in the schools today all kinds of sex educations. And most of it centers on how to do it and be safe. Even the government's got tapes they'll send you on how to be safe in homosexuality. I, I told a man talking about it, I said they have the best sex education in Nazareth, boy, that they'll ever have in any school. He said, didn't have it. I said, yes, they did. I said, they had it. Every day the teacher, the superintendent, the principal, my mother, my dad told me, you don't do that till you get married. 
Yeah, you hear me? That's the best education you get anywhere. Oh, hallelujah to God. I'm telling you, your testimony is everything. Your testimony. God is telling us. Amen. If the quality is right, our testimony, our testimony can be most effective against the lies, slurs, and other attacks of the devil on the truth. It's also rebuked him for his incapable of producing a top quality counterfeit Christian. He's always trying. That's what the tares are. Amen. The devil's always trying to produce. Amen. Hitler was going to produce a super race. That's what the new age is after. Amen. They're trying to produce a, a new a, a, a super race. I can tell you the only way that happened is to be born again. Amen. Amen. That, that race of people that are the firstborn he was now we are many brethren brought in to it. Amen. But a good testimony is a rebuke to the devil because he can't produce that. Only believers can live a Christian life by God's standards. Amen. Amen. I'm going to tell you something else. In this day, when all the talk of the baptism of the Holy Ghost, when we have all this you say what I say kind of junk, yeah. teaching people how to talk in tongues, play games with the Holy Spirit. I'm going to tell you nothing on this earth ever produced a specimen of Christianity like an old-fashioned baptism of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God Almighty living in me, aware of it every minute of every day. Amen. Wherever I am, the Holy Ghost is here. Whether it's in the marketplace, whether you do me right or wrong, I recognize that Christ is there. Oh, hallelujah. If you're really born of God, filled with the Holy Ghost, you don't have to call anybody up and ask him if you've been filled. You know you're filled. Somebody's in there. Hallelujah. I'm running out of time, but I want to throw this in. Attitude toward death. I said the attitude toward death. Amen. Most people spend most of the time trying to keep them dying. Right. Only to lose in the end. Amen. That's right. Amen. Some die to self and spend the rest of their life living. You know, a missionary doctor once stated that God's shown him that all doctors are failure because eventually all his patients are going to die. So he quit the doctor business and went out there to be a missionary. Amen. Listen, our attitude toward it, your attitude toward, to, toward death will greatly affect your warfare. I just picked this up in an old book. It said tradition states that Caesar called the Apostle Paul in for trial and began to threaten the great preacher. He said to him, I'll drive all your friends away. Paul said, they're all gone now, but Timothy. He said, I'll take all of your possessions. He said, Mr. Caesar, I lost everything when I found Christ. He said to him, I'll kill you. Paul said, you can't kill me, sir. My life is hid with God in Christ. Oh, listen, said that Caesar becomes so frustrated that he could do nothing against the Paul. What can the devil do against us if our attitude toward death, for me to live as Christ and to die as gain, our attitude toward that grave will govern everything about you, ladies and gentlemen. When we live that way, I'm going to tell you something, that's a weapon against hell. Oh, listen, that's a weapon against that darkness. He comes to you saying, I'm going to kill you. You can't kill me. I'm dead. I'm going to take everything you've got. Don't have anything. I counted everything that lost that I may gain in Christ. I'm going to run all your friends away. Well, them all left me when I got saved. Got new ones now you can't run on. Oh, my God, I'm feeling this this morning. I said, I'm feeling this this morning. They can run out of time. Jesus, Jesus has made us more than a conqueror. These are the weapons of our warfare. The Holy Spirit. Listen, the Holy Spirit finally. He is the weapon. Walk in the Spirit and you will not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. Say what you want. Believe anything you want. But I can tell you it is as imperative that a born-again believer be filled with the Holy Ghost as it is for an unregenerate man to be born again. I cannot overcome the devil. Paul said, you were born by the Spirit. You cannot perfect yourself in the flesh. The Holy Spirit. 
greatest single weapon. Yes, Lord. Because he makes the rest of them effective. Amen. The weapons of your warfare are not carnal. Amen. Bow your head with me. We leave these folks in this television audience. Let the message rule your heart. Jesus loves you and we love you. People that know worship in this place, we ask you to come. God bless you.